Hello and welcome to this interview uh, with Diego Gonzalez Rivas. My name is Joel Dunning and we're here at James Cook University Hospital in Middlesbrough. Uh, Diego needs absolutely no introduction. Uh, he spent the last decade teaching the world to do uniportal VAT surgery. But uh, in the last six months there's been a new revolution. Uh, your new revolution is to take uniportal VATs and bring it into the world of robotics. A fusion really of VATs and robotics, uh, the best of both worlds. So Diego, thank you so much for coming here to Middlesbrough. It's amazing mm. and, and I'm absolutely amazed by the, by the ability that you've discovered to use robotics in uniportal. So tell us a bit about how you came to use the robot and really what the advantages are for surgeons out there? Well, that um, was an idea that came to my mind last year uh, in September 2021. Because of the pandemic, I had to stay more time at home. I stopped traveling so much. So I had more time to think about um, the possibility of using the robot through a single hole. So in my institution in Spain, in La Coruña, we have the Da Vinci XI. Uh, since many years, I think more than seven years uh, ago, we, we bought but I never used because the, you know, the need of using four to five holes for me was like going back uh, in my evolution of Uniport. But during the pandemic, I had more time to think. So I, I was looking at the robot and I say, well, I think it is possible to, to uh, adjust, adjust the arms through two holes. I started with two holes after talking to my, my colleagues from Pumani Hospital. Uh, and we decided, OK, let's start with my portal uh, robot. Uh, canceling one arm and using three arms. And then the first, we did like two, three cases, two lobectomies, two, three lobectomies by using two ports with a utility incision, with an additional hole, camera in the upper part and uh, left hand and right hand in the lower part. One in the uh, small hole and the other in the utility incision. And we saw that it worked very well. And after three cases, I say, well, I think it will work for, for any portal as well. So I decided to put all the instruments all the uh, three arms together through a single hole, through a three incision, and changing the configuration, changing the, the clearance of the robot, it worked very well. At the beginning, it was a little bit difficult because we had some collision and, and difficult angles, but then we learned how to solve these problems. Um, till now, we have performed more than 120 cases with the excellent outcomes. Yeah, I mean, amazing you've done already 120 cases. Uh, and as you say, you've developed a way to do this without clashing, uh, to do it really smoothly. Uh, and really, for people watching, there are going to be two groups of people. So there's going to be the uniportal VAT surgeons that are mm -hmm. going, is this right for me? And then the multiportal RAT surgeons that are going, is this right for me? So maybe starting with uniportal VAT surgeons, what is the advantage of bringing a robot into their VAT practice? Well, yeah, we can see interest now coming from this these uh, two groups, as you mentioned. Uh, I think um, for the uniportal surgeons, uniportal bath surgeons, um, people who are doing just single incision, quick operation, um, quite cheap, uh, the, the interest of, robot, of robotics was not um, high because, you know, they have to go back to four to five incisions. But now we are creating a new interest in, in this kind of surgeons because they can see that they can use the technology, the 3D vision, uh, the, 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 um, the facilities for suturing, for example, which is something amazing with the robot. So we are offering them the possibilities of the robot by using a single hole. So we can see a, a lot of interest from the uniportal bath surgeons who can now use the robot, keeping the same intercostal one incision. So this is why some surgeons now, they are jumping into robotics because this, benefits of the robot, you know, the 3D, the, the view is amazing and the, and the ca capacity of clean sleep is yeah. much easier. For the multi-portal rat surgeons, we are also seeing a lot of interest because they can see that this is a, you know, the productivity technique can be, can be done by, by is, they don't need the special uh, skills. When you are doing multi-portal rats, you just need to learn, you know, uh, coordination with your assistant, which is very important. I think it's more important than multi-portal rats and uniportal rats. This is the only thing that is, you know, the, demanding. The, the assistant should be very skilled to place the arms and to check doing all, every step that there's no collision. So he need to move the arms, he need to uh, make the clearance, 
and when you go up from up to down, when you go from the subcardinal space to the protracular space. So there are tricks that, you know, now we set up one by one, and now we overcome the learning curve, and there's not a problem at all. We can solve all these yeah. issues. So, so really, for a unipodal VAT surgeon, it's amazing vision. It's much easier because it follows your hand. You've got control of your camera, and it's suturing that is just so easy. No doubt. And I guess for the multi-portal robotic surgeon, it's quicker. It's fast, yes. and it's perhaps less pain as well, and cheaper yes. as well because yes. it's fewer arms. Yes. We can see, we have seen in our patients that there's no pain. As we, at the beginning when we start, because we have more collision, it, it, there is a learning curve. And we are seeing, we are facing the same learning curve as we saw during the portal bats. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. <laughs> we spend longer time at the beginning with more difficulties to reach angles, some collision. Because in Uniportal, when you start, you all, when we started the technique in 2010, we have some collisions at the beginning, you know. Yeah. Uh, but now everything is smooth, quick, and you know, fast because we learn how to solve these issues. And with the robot, it's the same. So I think uh, the view you have. Is, it's impossible to, to have better. I mean, in the portal bats, even with 4K or even with the uh, uh, new cameras, I think you cannot have better view that we have with the robot. Mm. So the view and the, and the movements you can have inside are fantastic. So um, the only thing is, you know, you have to be coordinated with your assistant. So it's like a work, teamwork more than any portal bats. So it's not enough that you are good at the console, you have to be good also at the, at the bedside of the patient. So both should be, it's like 50-50. So yeah, it's like yeah. a, 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 a yeah. teamwork. Yeah, which is the whole thing about robotics, about partnership and teamwork. So let, maybe let's go to the robot. Yeah, maybe sure. come over here. And uh, here we have, if you want to come around yes, there, sure. let's go and see the robot. So here we've got a, uh, a kindly <laughs> patient, slightly plastic, uh, who has agreed to have a right up a lobectomy. And yes. maybe just talk us through. Uh, we're also very lucky to have Muga, who's uh, on the console as well from Romania. Thanks for coming. And, uh, but maybe talk us about the key points that makes this possible. <clears throat> Well, when we use any portal rats, the most important thing is that we need to know how to uh, set up the arms. That is the most important, and it's crucial. If you do, if you don't do this properly, because if you don't if we don't have a good uh, movement here, the surgeon at the console is completely limited, cannot move forward. So on the right side, we have designed after thinking a lot and trying all possibilities that the best the best configuration is cancel the arm one. So right side, arm one should be out. And then we use arm two, three, and four. Three arms. Three arms through the incision. And then normally, most of the time, almost 98% of the time, the camera should be on the arm two. So camera, same concept as in the portal bats, in the posterior part of the incision, to have the camera above your arms. So camera here, your arms here. Same as in the portal bats. Camera in the upper part. And arm three and four on the lower part, working in parallel. We don't need to cross the instruments. They work in parallel, OK? So that means that this is the left hand, and this is the right hand, like this. And we have to move everything at the same time. We always compare this like, this is like driving a car, the console, like this. You are going like this. If you have some difficulties, you just rotate. And then you go like this, and you solve the difficulties. So it's like working like this, all together, looking for the target place where you want to work. Another important thing is that when you see that there's no collision normally, the only thing is that now we have changed, because we have seen that with the trockers that the ENT surgeons use, it's called TORS trockers, transoral thoracic surgery trockers, we have more space. because. This diameter is bigger than this. So we avoid the collision in between this. So we use two trockers and one normal trocker on the center. If you hand customize the trockers and remove this piece, you can use three trockers, and that will be perfect. So we are waiting also for Intuiti to uh, create these trockers without this piece, because this piece is only for transoral surgery. We don't need at all the interactive. So um, we can remove this piece. I have three trockers like this, more space to work. You cannot put these together because they will crash. So you have to put uh, 
on the on the extreme on the opposite side, upper and lower. And in the middle, in the center, you use this conventional truck. By doing this, we can approach upper, lower, posterior, anterior without any problem. The only thing that the assistant should sometimes make a clearance here. If they see there should be a space here, more, normally one, uh, one hand minimum, and not too much distance. The assistant here sometimes need to change this, move the elbow, huh? and do the clearance to avoid here some kind of collision. But he, the, the assistant is always checking. He's checking the, the screen, he's checking the trockers. If he sees something, he move it. Or sometimes he need to he need to move like this in some part, okay? If he see that there is too much collision, he just change. So the 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 role of the assistant here is as important as the as the surgeon at the console. So important. Um, that's it. Well, we, we always work in parallel. We don't need to cross the, the hands. It's very important. As you can see, and there's no collision at all. Yeah. And if we want a staple, we're basically just going to take this arm out, put a 12 mil cannula uh, in, in uh, with a short form 45. Uh, exactly. Point. When you want a staple, yeah. when you use, use the staplers, we need to remove this trocker. Normally, it's the, the lower trocker. So we remove uh, this arm, yeah. the arm so four. Take that out. We change, that we out. change this for the uh, 12 millimeter trocker. We put again, and then we just put it here. You can see it's a little bit cool, so we just always some distance. And now he can use the, the staple. Important, very important. In uniportal rats, we, we, because we have two ways of doing uniportal rats. One is hybrid uniportal rats, um, which is a technique that is not pure rats, because that means that we use the robot for dissection. But then the bed assistant use the VATS staplers for dividing the vessels and the fissure. So this is like hybrid technique, which is not our concept. Our concept is do everything uniportal rats, complete pure rats. That means that the surgeon at the console use the staplers, use dissection, use everything. Uh, and this is more important because the, the main surgeon can control everything. Because in, in this kind of hybrid uh, uniportal rats, you need to have your assistant and you are leaving your assistant one of the most critical parts of the operation in VATS, which is the, the use of the staplers. Um, well, you need to remove one arm. Sometimes there's not enough space. So we believe in, in uniportal rats, pure concept with robotic staplers. And for this kind of pure rats, the incision cannot be at the same place as uniportal rats. We normally place fifth intercostal space for uniportal rats. But now, now with these pure rats, the incision should be lower normally at the seven intercostal space. Why? Because if you put the incision at the fifth intercostal space for right upper low, when you are going to put the staplers, the robotic staplers, you have no enough angulation to reach, for example, the vein or the artery or the fissure, which is in front of you. So you need a minimum length to allow the robotic stapler go in and rotate with freedom. Otherwise, if you try to put the staples to the fifth intercostal space for robotic lobectomy, then when you put a staple in, you are limited, completely blocked. You cannot rotate the staple, so it's not good. So putting the robot incision, the incision lower at the level of the seventh, you don't have problems to reach the apex because the robot is designed for this purpose, and this is why it's, it's so good. And then you will do everything with no problem. You don't feel that you are in the seven intercostal space. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you are doing uniportal VATS and you are in the seventh, it will be extremely difficult to do upper lobectomy because you will be too high yeah. for VATS, but not for robot. Yeah. And one tiny thing, we're just using a zero camera for this demo because we need to save our 30 for the case this afternoon, but it's 30 down, isn't it? But, and that's the key to actually being able to not have any clashing exactly. at all. That's an important part. We so, always keep the, the, the 30 down, like in uniportal rats, but there are some tricks. For example, what happens in case of addition? If you have a lot of additions and you have to reach the apex or you have to reach the anterior part, which is here, or the posterior part, then you can switch and you can put the 30 up and then you can release the additions easily. So in that moment, 
you change completely the, the movements. So that means that the camera is 30 up, so the arms will be here. And do then you, you can the, remove you all the additions easily. But do you change this to the fourth arm? We change this yeah. up. That's it. Sorry. Just up. All that's right. It. So yeah, that's good. it. Yeah, so that's fantastic. So, so this is brand new. It's less than a year old. But how do you see this evolving? What is the best way we can bring this in safely? Uh, what are your recommendations for surge if they want to try it? And how do we as a community, community bring this in safely? What is your vision? Well, I think we need to establish proper training programs uh, to teach people the tricks. Because now we are seeing like this explosion of interest of uni portal arts around the world. I'm receiving calls and messages, mails every day from many surgeons from over the world. They're going to try. And I have seen also mistakes from surgeons. They try themselves because yeah. there's not established a proper training. We are doing some training in Bucharest and, and in Lisbon, but it's not enough. We need to do mm -hmm. more. Um, and they try themselves, OK, because they have seen my videos and they want to try. And they do a lot of mistakes. So I think it's important to establish proper training, to show all the details, all the tricks, and to avoid them, the, the mistakes we made at the beginning, yeah. because you know we are working very hard uh, to establish this now, the perfect setup to do everything smoothly without any problems. So the first thing is try to get the stroke arts. Now we are waiting for the 30 milli, uh, for the eight millimeter staplers. Yeah, that will be, that'd be cool. fantastic. We'll yeah. get more space. And uh, I think this kind of videos will be very useful, very. Uh, um, uh, illustra illustra illustrative for them um, and well it's about uh, learning there's a learning curve in this yeah. technique of course uh, if you are if you are uh, s experienced with the rats will be much easier to start if you are experienced with any portal bats will be also much easier to start I don't think it's difficult uh, robotics is quite easy for any portal bat surgeons especially with this kind of view you know the camera and the instruments yeah. in the same direction so, well, of course, you need to be qualified for minimal invasive surgery. You have to have some experience in minimal invasive surgery to, to jump to the new portal. Right. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, and, uh, and we're entering an exciting new decade, aren't we? Sure. Uh, of Uniportal Rats. So, so uh, it's time for us to do a case this afternoon. So we'll sure. go and do a case. Uh, we'll try and put that and post it. So watch out for more videos from Diego. So for myself and everybody here, thank you very much. My pleasure, Joe. Thank you very much. Great. Cheers. <laughs>we set up the arms, how we place the robot uh, through a single incision. I'm with Muguriel Bosinciano, he's my, my partner in, in Uniportal Rats. So we work together as a team, as I said before, this is a, a teamwork, 50%, 50%. So he's so important doing the, this um, setup. And we are going to show how we move the robot, how we place the arms and how we do the configuration. Yes, okay, perfect. Mugur, you yes. want to say something? No, hello, and uh, I'm ready to, to position the, the robotic arms. Fantastic. Thank you. So, so let's try. It doesn't matter if the, if the uh, robot is on the left or on the right, uh, for, for example, for this right side case. Again, okay, so. because this is right upper, for example, we are on the right in the thorax, mm -hmm. we need to cancel the arm so. one. No, and it go. is very important now to move the robot with the laser. There is a laser here, you will see. Go, move. Just the, the cross should be in the upper part, here. You see the cross here, the laser, the laser. D deeper, 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 more, 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 more. Okay, so you can see here, perfectly place the cross on the posterior part of the incision. Very important. And now, we will cancel the arm. One we for the right arm. side, as far as possible, and back. And Mugu, you can explain. We always have like vertical this, but we can rotate a little bit more. Huh? Yes. You can explain. We can rotate a little bit more the boom, because the line must be parallel with the patient. A little bit more rotation here, a little bit more. 
Okay, you see the so. line, the line, the long line must be parallel with yes. the, the table. This one. Yes, the cross at the uh, pa upper part of the incision and the, the line yes. parallel with the patient. No. More or less parallel, this line. Yes. Huh? Okay. And now okay. we use the arm two for the robot, for arm the camera. Arm two for the camera. Have the trockers. Maybe a little height, boom height. Mm -hmm. uh, let's never adjust it. Because for the staplings, when I take out the stapler, must have some uh, some some space. Install and filter targeting. No targeting, never. We don't do targeting. It's one of the things that make this faster. The mark in the middle of the letter. Yes, this mark here. You see the the black in the middle. should be in the middle in of the middle. one of these. Yes. I will show you now. Here. This mark in the middle of the letter. You should check that this is in the middle of one of these. Yes. Either the first, second, third, or fourth, doesn't matter. But should be in the middle, not on the left or on the right, in the middle. In okay? the middle, yes. And the same with this and the same with that. Yes. So, the second trocker. Thank you. Put all the trockers now. Give me the third trocker, please. Thank you. Workspace may be limited. We put the trockers and then. With this mark, the big, uh, the big black mark, at the edge, and then <coughs> arrange here. So, third arm, like this. Equal space there, in the middle of the letters. Maybe two separate this, move, three and four, a bit closer. Four. You move like this? Yes. The camera, please. And now with the clearance, you see the clearance? We the need clearance, to do clearance yes. here. Clearance, yes, but the distance we is We already good did now. before, but we need to, yes. do, to, to, move, do, show, to, move. to move the yellow and to have like more space, okay? Because if they are too close, maybe it will be more collision. You have to go like this. To have the space here between Essential. the joints. So the you have to be sure place. that the clearance is always open, okay? Not like this. Otherwise, we'll collide. Searching for the camera target. in the upper part, yes. always. This always. is a very important concept. And the instruments below, parallel. Not like this. So my parallel. left arm is in a pro-grasp, arm number three. And the right arm is the Maryland dissector. You also use the direct vision for positioning. It's important. The screen and the direct vision. It's because you have an utility incision, so you can't see through you the You can incision. see through the incision. Just for placing to put the arms. To put yes. And then you are ready to go for yes. the and now we have the console surgeon. The console and here. We'll take the suction. OK, so, so now I'm ready, you see? To go everywhere. And the assistant with the suction will follow the surgeon. So, one, one important detail. It is very important that the assistant, in this case a mover, use the suction because the instruments that he use are only two or three. Long curve, longer than this. Metallic should be metallic, one. long curve suction like this. So he has to see the space to uh, help, OK? To help with this. Very important. Huh? To expose, for example, retract the line, uh, suction, Do some remove movements. the blood or the liquid or whatever. Huh? So the good thing of any portal rats is that you don't need too many instruments. You don't need raspers to retract, because you work like this. So everything that happens around you doesn't matter. It's not like you multi-portal rats. Multi-portal rats, you have instruments coming from here, from here, from here. So you need to have retraction to reach that, that part. In any portal rats, you go like this. So with a, with a robot, you can retract and work. So you don't need too much retraction. It's one of the things that I, we saw 
It's the system mu must not interfere all the time, only when it needed. Exactly. So the, the suction must be kept um, as much as possible near the camera trocar is the best position to have. And under the surgeon uh, instruments, you see, under, always under, not between, because you will, uh, we will, uh, you will, uh, you will um, hurt the, <laughs> the dissection field. So this is how we set up the robot. This is how we put the arms. It's and a very we, quick docking, as you will see. Yeah, this is another thing. One, two minutes, and also undocking is very, very fast. For some reason, you, you want to undock? You undock this one out. Yes, you put this one aside, this one out, this one out. And you are undocked, ready to take action if you have a problem inside, okay? Fast changing the ports, moving the robot, it, it's uh, easy, it's easy. So, this is how we set up the ports, this is how, how we do in the portal labs, and let's see with the patient uh, a more interesting video. Thank you.